We don't remember trauma in our left brain narrative memory areas. We remember trauma with our bodies. That we encode traumatic memory as a bodily and emotional state rather than as a narrative. And why do we do that? We think that we do that because it's safer. Because if you have to think, uh, oh yeah, a mountain lion ate two of the kids last week. We're, that takes longer than having your body freeze and start to look around um, to see what's out there. That's much more protective than having to remember. And where did they see that mountain lion? Uh, that's very slow. But the problem is that when we remember uh, fear, when we remember hopelessness, when we remember uh, loneliness um, as a feeling without an event, we don't experience it as memory. We don't know that we're remembering. And I think that's something to think about in these coming days, because when we feel the real and present fears uh, related to this epidemic situation, those are of course real and they're protective because our fears keep us careful. But some of us are also going to have fear memories stimulated by this situation in which we are, are in danger potentially anywhere we go. Um, and, and so, and the same with feeling hopeless as this situation goes on in what feels like an interminable way. We have losses. Uh, we, we lost the in-person networker symposium, which is very dear to our hearts. And, and there's a mourning for that. Um, we've lost contact with friends with coworkers, sometimes even with family members. So that's, those real experiences, though, are also gonna trigger the feeling and body memories of other, um, not similar uh, world situations, but similar feeling situations. So Dan Siegel reminds us, that these implicit body and emotional memories do not carry with them the internal sensation that something is being recalled. We act, feel, and imagine without recognition of the influence of past experience on our present reality. And, and this is also the what, what causes the phenomenon of triggering. It's the body's instinctive physical reaction to all stimuli that are connected either um, directly or very, very subtly. Um, and it is quite amazing. Um, I always remember a young man uh, who I'll call Ben. I remember Ben coming in in October and he said, well, my seasonal affective disorder has kicked up again. And, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And he said, yes, this cool cloudy weather. Now I'm in, I'm in Northern California. <laughs> so, so cool cloudy weather you know, means we don't have sun for the whole day. Uh, uh, and I said to him, hmm, tell me, what did cool, cloudy weather mean when you were a kid? And he said, well, I grew up in North Dakota and cool, cloudy weather meant we were stuck in the house with mom because Cool, cloudy weather meant snow, rain, freezing cold temperatures. And then he said, oh, no wonder I'm depressed. 
because mom was his abuser. Mom was a very, very frightening individual. So his body responded to the cool, cloudy weather, uh, not with seasonal affective depression, but with body memories of hopelessness. Mm -hmm.